Hi, uh, I'm Will. Uh, I'm an Angular GD, Microsoft MVP, and uh, I'm, uh, I'm part of the uh, uh, organizer of uh, Angular Taiwan community. So today I want to talk about the perpetrator, the hack way. So raise your hand if you ever used perpetrator before. Is there anybody? OK, less, 10, uh, less than 10 people. So that's very few. So I, I talked to somebody uh, yesterday. That, uh, that guy used Angular for years, but he never, saw, uh, he never even know about Protrader. Because Protrader has been building inside the Angular CRI. So every time you install Angular, then you get uh, the Protrader. So Protrader is an end-to-end -end testing tool and the framework. So uh, today I want to talk about in depth about uh, the projector and how to use it uh, efficiently. So let's make the projector great again, all right? So at the beginning, let's define what's hacker. OK, a computer hacker is any skilled computer expert that user, uh, use their technical knowledge to overcome a problem. But in my mind, hacker is much more. In my mind, Hacker use creative way to solve problems. As we know, perpetrator has a lot of problems. And sometimes it frustrated to developers. OK, let's see some problems. OK, let's get started. If you never used perpetrator before, what can you do? First, install Angular CRI globally first. And then, engineer, create a new project. The third one is update the web driver. That's very important steps. So you can run the web driver manager, update, then, then that's it. The last step is run the perpetrator. So you can run uh, npx, perpetrator, end-to-end, perpetrator config.js file. That's all. But remember, don't not, uh, do not use ng-e2e to run perpetrator because it is very, very slow, right? Okay. Let's uh, talk about a basic end-to-end -end test case. Uh, there's a description over here, can you understand? I want to make sure me, Wu Huang, must be shown on the speaker's page of NGMOI, all right? And for this kind of end-to-end -end testing, there are only four steps. The first one is navigate to the home page, and the second one is uh, click on the speaker's link. The third one is uh, click on my photo, the, the first one is validated down that contains my name on it. So that's a test case for end-to-end, for -end, all right? Here's the code. Proceed. Uh, only four steps, and the code is pretty straightforward, right? Browser that get, open a, a page, and click on the link text speakers. The third one is uh, find out uh, uh, element by XPath, then click. The first one is validate the, the DOM text. Contains Wei Huang. That's all. Pretty simple, and it, it very easy to get started. So let's run the end-to-end -end script. What would you get? Failure. Yeah. That's how Prechetta works. It's an end-to-end -end testing framework. So it simulates users to, to use the browser to test your web applications, all right? So can you understand what's the reason it failed? No element found using locator, right? This API called locator by link text speakers. That's the error message. Can you really know what's the problem of the, the code? Do you know which line? The step two, right? OK. And then let's check the stack trace. If you see the stack trace carefully, you will see the, uh, the exact error point, which is this line. The other information are, are not very clear. So the developer experience is very bad. That's why so few people use Perchator, you know? <laughs> 
Okay, so what's the problem of this? The error message is like this, and uh, the line number, you can find it in your stack trace, all right? And the problem should be list nine, which is element by link text speakers. So what's the root cause? The root cause is by link text is cache sensitive. That's it. So what, it, what you need to do is check it out the, the, the uppercase of the text, okay? It will find element by what it rendered. What's that mean? Let me show you. Okay, this is the MGMY website, right? As my test case, I click on the speakers. That's it, right? Let me check out the down tree. Can you see that? What's the link text? The link text is speakers, all right? But what it rendered, it rendered all uppercase, okay? But how it, how the down tree is not all uppercase, but the display all uppercase? It is because the down has been transformed by style sheet, all right? So everything uppercase. For Protractor, Protractor is based on Selenium, and Selenium uses web driver to control the browser works, all right? So for the web driver API, everything are case sensitive. So if you want to use web driver to detect part of page on your browser, everything is case sensitive. That's very important part. Okay, so we now, we now know link text is case sensitive. So how can we solve the problem? Easy, make things uppercase. We remember one thing, Protractor is, is for end-to-end -end testing. The end-to-end, -end, which means end is the browser, the user, use the web application. The other end is your code. That means end-to-end. So how you view the browser, the result, is how you test. Okay, so it's totally different from the unit testing. It's different. Is that really make sense? It looks buggy, right? Because the, the code is very straightforward, and uh, it's a bug. Actually, it's not. It's not a bug, it, because it's end-to-end uh, -end testing. So that's how end-to-end -end testing behaves. So what you write is not what you expect. This is a common problem. So we need to overcome that problem using Hackway. Okay, so let's fix the bug and run again. Boom, error again, frustrated, all right? So for this error, can you really understand what, what happened? It said expect empty string to contain Wei Huang. What? What does that mean? And the error nine number is 25, 25 nine over here for this file. Let me show you some code. There's a demo one over here. And the error nine should be this one. Can you really understand what is happened? You locate a down tree a down element by a X pass. The X pass is absolutely right, all right? Then you expect the, the element to contain a text, but this night failed. How you debug it? This is so hard to debug it. So, You can still find a nine number in the stack trace, but it doesn't help. <laughs> because the, the code has no problem at all. But what, what's the exact root cause? So the problem is here, and uh, we find a nine number of the error, but it doesn't help. So the problem should be this nine, as we know, but the down exactly exists, okay? So the root cause is animation. You know, the pressure is end-to-end -end testing. All the tests is driven by WebDriver, right? 
So web driver control the browser to use your web app. And the speed is, is way too high, way too fast. So when someone click my image, then animation will appear and wait to the animation end should be wait to maybe one uh, maybe 100 milliseconds or 200. We don't know. It de depends on the, the CPU, the, the, the PC performance, and the an animation settings, right? So that's the real problem. So at that moment, yes, done doesn't exist. That's why this error happened. Okay, how to overcome the, this kind of animation issue? There are two ways to do that. The first way is waiting for two seconds. <laughs> Just like set time out, you know? <laughs> right? So, why is two, why is two seconds? Two seconds is a magic, magic number. You never know. Okay, what about 10 seconds? Much better, right? But the test, test speed will be lower down. Not good, all right? So let's check out the, the second way. The second way is use the expected condition API to wait for specific down show up. Okay, the API become a little bit complex, but not that complicated. So the first one here is a example, just sleep. So you can, you can await a browser that sleep and give it 2,000 milliseconds. The second way is expected conditions. Can you check the API? Under uh, third nice, third nice, all right? So browser that wait, and the uh, EC is expected condition. Text to be presented in admin, and, uh, and uh, input the admin finder and a text. And uh, at most, wait for five seconds, at most. But uh, it detect the, the, the admin every minute second. So it's very efficient. Even you have an animation. I, I don't think your animation will wait for lo longer than five seconds. I don't think so. If, if your animation longer than five seconds, I think it's a bug, right? <laughs> OK, final result. That's run it, uh, the, the, the projector again. Everything passed. Yeah. How's that? How's projector? Fr frustrated, right? It's so hard to use, right? Yeah, that's a problem. So that's why I need a hacky way to solve the problem. So a few weeks ago, I made a tool called Projector Recorder. It's very, very new. And this tool is built by my own. And uh, this tool is in a very early preview. Um, this tool is based on an, an amazing tool called Cateron Recorder. Anyone heard about that before? Cateron? Okay, only few. This tool is excellent. And uh, it's open source and it's free. So I modify it to project use. Okay, so what, what features I, I have right now? Uh, this tool is based on, uh, it's fully tailored just for project users. And it's a pro type script, so you can use that tool inside your Angular uh, application. And it support, I think, a web syntax, and they use expected condition for better developing experience. And also, it support non-Angular apps to do the end-to-end -end testing. OK. Also, the upstream pull request is on the way. OK. Let's make some demo. Okay, how can I use uh, the projector recorder? The first, it's a Chrome extension. So when you install it, just open it. Okay. Then we create a new test case. Let's make sure someone exists on the list of speakers page. All right. And then I click the record. OK, restart the page first. So this is how record works. The record, you open a page. Then I click on the speaker's link. OK, so anyone of you on the list? 
Okay, what about Debra? I want to make sure Debra is on the list. And I validate this text. Must be exist on a page. Okay, that's end-to-end -end testing. Then right-click this down and select to project the recorder and then verify text. Done. That's it. So I stop recording. So right now we have four steps. Open a page, click on a, on a link, and click on an image, right? And the verify text over this express. That's it. So what should I do now? Export. I implement four different kinds of portraiture source code. It's so cool, you know. Let's check out the portraiture async await version. Then copy to clipboard. Then I switch back to my Angular apps. Did it everything? Passed, save, and run. That's it. That's how you build end-to-end -end testing run under Protrator. So let's see how it works. As you can see, the browser has been opened and uh, browse to the home page and click on the link and it failed. So, there's a fail, the reason, unable to find element two to clickable. Can you really understand what it, what it said? Can you tell me which line caused the error? Adding, right? Exactly, because the error message is very clear. You have very easily to point out the failure point. So, this is the point we know, and uh, we just know that Link test is case sensitive, and uh, in our page, the link is uppercased, right? So what can I do? I click on the links, uh, speakers, and uh, I transform to uppercase. That's it, right? Then run the portrayer again. Easy, right? So that's, that's how I say the, uh, the developer experience is very, very important, okay? So I open up the home page, click on the speakers. Done. Is that good? <laughs> so I really like this because Portrait Recorder really saves tons of time when developing end-to-end -end testing. Okay. So there are some best practices uh, for you. The first one is you, you must know all the link text or button text, any text related comparison will be case sensitive. That's, that is very important. It's end-to-end -end testing. The second one, the window size matter. It's very important. It's because when you run in the end-to-end -end testing, the website could be responsive web design, right, RWD. So the, the window size really matter for your end-to-end -end testing. So be remember to, to set up the, the window size before you run your end-to-end -end testing scripts. So can you see that? Everything I already been done. Just uncommon the code. Things get done. Right. And the third one, do not use NGE2E because this is really, really slow. It because NGE2E combine the three different tasks in this script. The first one is update web driver every time. This is really con time consuming and uh, not necessary. The second one is uh, it will run the ng serve every time. This is really, really slow. I don't want that. So what I recommend is that ng e2e and uh, leave this as a t empty, so don't run ng serve, and uh, don't web driver update, that's all. Or you can update driver by yourself and run protractor by yourself. That's it. Okay, what about the second part? The second part is Chrome options. The Chrome options is for your better end-to-end -end testing. 
There's a config file called perpetrator config.js. Okay, it's in the in here. Okay, this is a config file. So there's a Chrome options. This is not built, built in by default. So you 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 have to uh, enter this part of source code by yourself into that file. Then you will set up the Chrome options for your end-to-end -end testing. So there are some of the uh, Chrome options are very useful. The first one is fixed window size. I like that. But uh, I don't recommend you use the star ma maximize version, only if you need that, okay? So fixed window size will be better when you do the uh, end -to -end testing. The second one is, is there anyone use still monitor in this room? Yeah, I think many people use still monitor, right? So you probably have a need that if I run the end-to-end -end testing, the web browser will open up in the second monitor, not the, your main monitor, right? So you can do is set up your window position to your first monitor's width. Then your uh, browser will open on the second monitor. Easy, right? What about you have three monitors? You, you have to count yourself. <laughs> Okay, then the third uh, best practice is keep things dirty. What's that mean? You know, sometimes you, we do end-to-end -end testing need to overcome a problem that is login process. You know, login process sometimes need to uh, validate by image validation, you, you, you know, capture, right? So you cannot overcome the, 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 the capture issue uh, by using your projector scripts. So that's how I, what I do. I set up a user data directory, and uh, every time I run perpetrator, all the stay will be saved on that folder, including cookies, local storage, or web workers. Just like someone has been logged in into a website. After you log in, then you use your perpetrator script to run the end-to-end -end testing. Just bypass all the login process, okay? Hella scrum. So if you are doing the end-to-end -end testing, the best way you run is not showing up the browser. Because if you're showing up the browser, where is your mouse? Your mouse is, is, is hover on the page everywhere. Else, you know? So you, your end-to-end -end script will become unstable. You are unexpected to, 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 to browse your website by using uh, automation. So that's the problem. So it's better to use headless uh, option. There are some others, and some others are very obvious and easy to understand. So I skip that, that part. OK, final one. You know, many websites have some anti-robot detection. For perpetrator, it's for end-to-end -end testing. It's also for automation, right? For example, uh, you want to buy a ticket for a speci specific event. You need a robot, right? You want to buy a train ticket. You need to some, some robot to do something. But you know, many websites are implementing uh, some of the anti-robot detection. So what if I want to use perpetrator to do automation? How can I hide the footprint of web driver on that website? So. This is really hacky. So this is some website that may show up. Please verify you are, you are human when you run perpetrator, <laughs> right? So what can you do? Can you understand this source code? I use Fiddler to solve the problem. The, the, the Fiddler is a, a HTTP proxy tool. So sometimes it's used for HTTP expectation. And uh, I, I implement a customized rule uh, on the function on before response, which means my browser requests uh, to, to, to the server, and I set up a proxy in, in the middle of the request, right? So I send request to my proxy, that is uh, Fiddler. Fiddler send request to the server, real server, then send back, then send back. That's it. So 
every time you run Protractor, Protractor run on uh, Selenium, Selenium use web driver to control the browser to request to the server. Okay, so web driver will inject one spe special property inside your web page. So the, the server may attack, uh, detect this property exists or not. Which property? This one. Navigator.webdrivers. Uh, no, web driver. So all you need to do is easy, remove it. But this is not so easy to re remove it. It's because you cannot delete it itself. It, because it's it, it con contained in Navigator's prototype. It, it's on a parent object. So you need to get a parent object, delete the property, then set it back. That's it. OK, let me show you what I can do. There's a demo over here. There's nothing special. But uh, what if I run the script? OK, I run the script. Then I, I point to specific down, and I hit click. OK, then when the, uh, the next page show up, I uh, locate it to some down, and uh, click again. For this section, this step, I will get this one. OK, so now I open up Fedora. Then there's a rule and the customize rules. There's a function called on before response. Then you just put the code snippet inside. That's it. OK, the other step is set up your perpetrator config file. And uh, you need to open this one, process server, localhost, 8888. OK, that's, that's safe. And I screw this test case. And uh, I uh, include this text case. That's it. Run again. As you can see, the browser opened up, and then I browse to Udemy website. And I, that the uh, feeder change the HTML, remove the web driver uh, property, and navigate to the second page. <gasps> They change the rule. <laughs> <laughs> it works yesterday, you know. <laughs> I need to figure out how, how, how to overcome the problem again. <laughs> so that's how robot detection. Okay, there are uh, a few links over here on if you want to follow me, you can uh, search me on the Twitter, Facebook, or there's a blog of mine. Thank you.